Hello and welcome to my first After Effects tutorial. If you wonder why I am using this weird text-to-speech method, well, I have no microphone and a terrible German accent. Trust me, it sucks. I hope you enjoy this video anyway. Let's pretend, I would talk, it would sound something like this. Hello and welcome to my first After Effects tutorial. Nobody wants that. Now, let's get serious. I got a lot of tutorial requests, based on the videos I did for some German rap artists. There are already many green screen tutorials out there. So we don't put too much detail on the key in process. But, we will put the focus on some methods to make your green screen scene more dynamic. This is what we gonna to create. Now, let's start. First edit your video or scene you want to use in the editing program. Editing in After Effects can be a pain in the ass. For now, I am using this short clip. Let's jump into After Effects. Create a new composition. We have to make sure that our composition has the same settings like the footage we want to use. In Premiere you can check your footage properties by right-clicking your footage, Preferences. This clip has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 p and 23, 976 frames per second. Back in After Effects we will change our setting to exact that resolution. The frame rate is already set to 23, 976, now mark your clip in Premiere and press Ctrl, C. Back in After Effects, click into the timeline and press Ctrl, V. Like I said, we don't gonna put too much detail on the key in process. We do it in a very simple way. Pick the pen tool. Draw a mask around our main object. Click the footage and go to effects. Keying, key light. Go to screen color and pick the color you want to key. Now, let's tweak some of the settings to get a more accurate key. Put the view to screen mat. Increase the screen gain to make the gray areas black. Put the pre-blur to 0, 0,3. Now we want to get rid of these unclean gray areas. Go to screen mat. Increase clip black. For clip white we can push the slider down. Put the screen shrink to about minus 1. The screen softness to about 0, 0,5. Now get back to view and go to final result. All these settings are depending on the green screen footage. Depending on what quality your footage has, you have to experiment around with those settings. Now let's import our background. Put it below our main footage. Before we start to match the color, we want to bring some life into our scene. We don't want it to be so static. Go to layer and create a new camera. I am choosing 35mm. Turn the video and the background footage to 3D. Now let's push the background into Z space. Scale it back up. Push shift to keep the right properties. Now, let's bring up the camera transform settings. Put keyframes for every parameter. With the camera tool we can now move around in 3D space. Push the background even more into Z space. 
find the right position, so that it matches, with your actor. Now, go to the end of your clip and make more keyframes. Then, go to the beginning of your clip. Take the camera tool to find a starting point for our camera move. You can get close and even rotate. When you are happy with your starting point, go to the keyframes at the end of your shot. Now you can choose the ending point for your camera move. Don't mind if your object is cuddled out at the bottom. We will put a letter box on it later to hide it. Now pull the keyframes to the very end of your clip. Now, let's see what we have so far. Cool. Let's get closer at the starting point to get a more visible movement. Okay now let's match the color. Go to effects and presets. Type in tint. Apply it to your background layer. Put the amount to 50. Now apply it to your green screen layer. Put the amount to 50 as well. Now type in curves. You can also find every effect in the effect tab at the top. Color correction. Curves. Now play around to find the right contrast. Next. Go through the color channels to match the color of your actor. Now we are getting somewhere. Let's blur out the background to put our character into focus. Choose the camera lens blur effect. Apply it to your background. Click repeat edge pixels. Now play around with the blur amount to find a decent blurry look. Now, let's bring in some atmosphere to give our scene a more natural, organic touch. I am using the atmosphere stock footage from Video Copilot Section Essentials 2. There is a link in the description below. You can find similar stock footage for free on the internet. When you find atmosphere you like, put it between the green screen layer and the background layer. Make it 3D. Push it behind your character. This clip is 720p. So we need to scale it up. Now, copy the curves effect from your green screen layer by pressing Ctrl C. Then paste it on your atmosphere layer and press Ctrl V. Now let's import some particles to give our scene a dusty look. You can download these particle clips for free at videocopilot.net. You can find the link in the description. Now let's find a clip that fits into our scene. Put the clip above your green screen layer. By pressing F4, you can bring up the transfer modes. Choose Add and scale up the clip. Now we apply the curves effect. Play around with the contrast and match the color like we did before, to match it to our scene. Now go to layer and create a new solid. We name it flare. Apply optical flares. This is also a plugin from Video Copilot. Choose Add in the Transfer Mode. Go to Options. You can choose a preset or build your own lens flare.
In source type, click 3D. Then choose a position for the flare. You can adjust the brightness and the scale of the flare. You can match the color of the flare by picking the color from the environment. Apply a fast blur. Play around with the flicker settings to bring more dynamic to the flare. Now, mark our layers. Go to layers. Now choose pre-compose. Now we gonna apply a letter box. Go to layer and create a new solid. Take the Rectangle Mask tool and pull in over the solid, along the title save line. Subtract the mask. Now we gonna create an adjustment layer. Put it below the letter box. Apply another tint effect. Now we put the amount to 30. Next, we choose levels. Put it on the adjustment layer as well. Play around with the black and white channels to find a good contrast. Let's put the tint amount to 40. Let's import some glass textures to create a dirty lens look. You can find these, guess what? Yeah, at Video Copilot. What can I say? Everybody knows that site, but they really do offer a lot of good stuff. Put it below the adjustment layer, and put the transfer mode to add. Now bring on the camera lens blur again. Click repeat edge pixels and put the amount to about 10. Draw a mask around the area we want to have clean. Subtract the mask. Press F to bring up the mask feather. Turn the mask feather up. Now, double click the pre-comp to get back into our main comp. Let's find a point where we want the flare to get very bright for a moment. Click the stopwatch for brightness and scale. Press U to bring up the keyframes. Now go about 2 frames before our keyframes and make another 2 keyframes. Then, put 2 more keyframes a couple of frames behind. Now, get to the keyframes in the middle, and increase the brightness and scale amount. Adjust the keyframes, just as you like. You can add some more lens flare objects. Feel free. Let's bring the opacity of our atmosphere layer down a bit. Press T. Then you can decrease the opacity value. Get back into our pre-comp. Now we want to fix some focus problems. Put another camera lens blur effect on our pre-comp layer. Put the blur amount to zero. Click the stopwatch to make a keyframe right behind the point where the lens flare gets brighter. Do the same with the camera lens blur on our glass texture. Press U to bring up the keyframes. Go forward a couple of frames and put more keyframes. Now change the blur radius for the glass texture to zero. 
and the radius for the pre-comp layer to about 10. Then go a couple of frames forward in the timeline. Copy the second keyframes by pressing Ctrl C and paste them by pressing Ctrl V. Go more frames forward in the timeline and copy the first keyframes. Let's bring the opacity of our glass texture down a bit. Now, go to our pre-comp layer and press P. Thoughts bringing up our position properties. Press Alt and click the stopwatch. Now we can type in an expression to make our scene a little bit shaky. Type in wiggle 5 comma 6. Scale up the pre-comp layer just a little little bit. Don't forget to hold shift to keep the right proportions. Now, create another solid. Double click. Subtract the mask. Press F and bring up the mask feather. With this vignette we are getting a little bit more depth. Put it below the letter box. Bring down the opacity a bit. In the main comp, we now can activate the motion blur. Activate it in the pre-comp as well. But only on the pre-comp layer. There we go. I hope you find that guide helpful. Take a look at my videos and tell me what you want to learn next. If you liked the tutorial, please comment, subscribe and smack the like button.